lovely lady hi how's it going good how about you good. good it is beautiful here like full sun and like 18 degrees and it feels so good oh it feels so good like it I boosts know. the morale like it's not even funny oh I know I know I was literally sitting out there all afternoon after my lunch and I was just like soaking it in and I could just feel everything. Like, I just felt so light. I'm like, this feels yeah. so good. I've been missing this so bad. Oh, yeah. Basically, yeah. like, it's like coming out. Like, there is something said that, you know, we hibernate during the winter months. Like, and now just that warmth and the beautiful weather, it just really pulls everything out. And we want to, like, express ourselves even more. We want to be out there. We want to, like free ourselves like yeah. just become more alive you know there's yeah. that energy like just the aliveness I don't know that's how I feel <laughs> me too even like when I was sitting out there I had my cat outside with me too because he's been cooped up all winter yeah he was on a leash right like because I don't trust him yeah. um so he was sitting on the the like the porch beside me and I was just listening to all the birds like this is so nice to hear and it's such it's I think it's something we take for granted like yeah. Like I know like in my bedroom window in the summertime when the windows open, the birds start at like four in the morning. And sometimes I'm just like, it's too early. Like too just early be quiet. Right. But I was sitting out there to this afternoon thinking like, oh, I have missed this so bad. This feels yeah. so good. Like just to hear little signs like that, that every, that the whole world is turning over like it feels yeah good. <laughs> yeah it's so it's so like that's why I love the four seasons because we love novelty like you know what I mean like it's like so there's something to be said about every season like there's this this uh I don't know like this excitement that occurs and then after that eventually you just get out of that honeymoon phase and you're like oh then you're yeah. it's too hot or the flies are out to get me or like or in the winter months you're like hey, it's too cold and like <laughs> you know the, the the weather is shitty I can't drive you're like yeah. I gotta you know like shovel my driveway so it's like yeah. it's so it's like what that's that's you know the whole human race it's like there's the bad and the good and it's like yeah you sometimes you need those the moments of of love suck to appreciate the good so yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and I've heard the expression that every I have to say this right every season has a reason mm -hmm. and I, I find I just find it so cool because I'm starting to lean into that more now too like I'm starting to be more aware of how my energy levels shift and change and my mood and my thoughts and my desires and goals like they I, I've noticed they all shift and change with the seasons so um true. and so like I'm starting to try and lean into that a little bit without leaning too much like I found this winter like it was just it was way too much yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to lean into what I was dealing with all winter long but like yeah. to sort of lean into it a little bit to be mindful of it and be like okay like this is a natural part of what happens with the body when we're more in tune with our seasons and then use mm -hmm. that to my advantage yeah <laughs> versus no, being so like true. a victim to it yeah and it, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so true and I find like you know the way I hibernate is I throw myself in courses and and my work and and you know like stuff like that and then once I find that the beautiful weather is out and it's like the next season it's like okay now I'm feeling more like I want to like I, I I loved your your posts about like you know trying to like find that balance where like you know like the work-life balance where yeah. you can there's that time for work especially like spring and summer you want to like like you find more of that balance where you're like okay you're doing the things that, like you're more outdoors you're you're like like you're the I don't know I find I don't know for you but for for me especially I, I find and for the people who are listening for you know like entrepreneurs and solopreneurs who like throw themselves in work when it's like you know dark earlier and it's more cold it's less ideal to go outside but then you you do find that in spring and summer you're like okay I need to find more of that work-life balance and uh, tap into that a bit more for my well-being exactly yeah and in the past I've always thrown myself in the winter into like a large project of some kind right and this winter 
I not only had a large project that I hadn't anticipated having, but then I also had so many other things crop up. So I feel like this past winter was too much. It was too much all at once and not of within my, I want to say control, but I also don't want to say control because I'm trying to move away from that mindset of everything's in my control, but Hmm. But it was just way beyond the scope of what I had anticipated. I think that's the better way to phrase it. Yeah. Um, and so it was a lot all at once. And then I was just totally unprepared and then kind of struggling and trying to weave it all in to make it work. And it just didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> you're definitely work. too much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I it definitely you. didn't. Um, but yeah, like now, yeah, like when I was sitting out there this afternoon, like I was just thinking like, you know what does my ideal work day look like? Right. Like what is it or my ideal life in general? What does that really look like? Cause I think a lot of us, myself included, we have this narrow vision of what we're supposed to do every day. And we think that everything on the outside of that is a luxury or, you know, something that we, we don't have access to unless we compromise something else. And I'm really trying to find a way to bring those extremities more into my focus and right. bring my and maybe bring my work focus out to include my extremities right to really encompass all of it so yeah. and I feel like this time of season really helps to facilitate that shift like you're That's saying because so like, we want to be outside more we want to be doing more and we want to have more family time and socialization and all of that so mm -hmm. um yeah so I'm kind of in that like expansion period where I'm like okay like I'm like something's shifting and I don't yeah. know where it's going to go, but I want to lead it where I want it to be. Right. What I yeah. want it to look like. And I it's actually that. really, it's actually really hard to think about what your ideal day could look like. Right. When we remove that, those blinders of, of like what we're supposed to have a day look like. Yeah. Um, that's like, that's why when I put up that post yesterday, you know, like if you had six hours in your day, how would you fill it? Because right now my work day is six hours. It's whenever Annabelle's off at school. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so yeah. I'm I'm thinking, okay, like, how do I want these six hours to look? Because I actually don't want to be working those six hours. I love what I do. And I could definitely fill it with six hours of work. Right. But exactly. I'm, I don't have that flexibility or that. Yeah, exact, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, you know, how in those six hours, would I really truly use it? To That's not right. just do what I want to do, but be productive at what I want to yeah. get done that day. And then right. have that time to fulfill myself and to include those extremities of things that we don't naturally include as part of our day-to-day -day requirements. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. I think that's part of the reason why, like, I love planning out my day. And I'm pretty sure, I think you know that of me. Like, I love mm -hmm. starting my day out, planning my day. And you block yourself some time where, okay, I'm going to, like, like hit it hard for the, the you know, one hour or two and then an hour for myself and then maybe another hour or two, hit it hard and then another hour for myself. And then Annabelle comes home and then it's family life and whatever. And I find that's yeah. a, be a beautiful structure in that way. And I also find, you know, that could be a season in itself, right? Where you're feeling that's where it's supposed to be going. And then maybe when, you know, fall and winter comes back, then you'll, you'll feel like, okay, I want to dedicate more time into work. And that's, I find that's our form of hibernation. I, I yeah. you know, like, and more like, um, um, you know, that's, you know, fall and winter, that's when you're like, okay, I want to like get back more into like a routine type of lifestyle and like, uh, like, and, and have like follow like a certain, uh, a diet regimen or like a, a workout plan or whatever. And, and I find, because I find, I don't know about you, but during like summer months, especially, it's harder to talk to clients who want to, hey, you want to hit up this, uh, this like healthy lifestyle program? Or do you want to, you want to go to the gym? Or like, it's like, they're more like, they can feel more like, no, leave me alone with that. I want to, they're more carefree. They're more like yeah. less regiment. And, you know, do you feel that? Yeah, I've noticed that too. Yeah, that's, and that's kind of why I'm I'm really liking the structure that I've moved into now with that like membership based group style because it does allow for that flexibility. There isn't yeah. that rigidity, right? Of of following a strict routine. We're more looking at that um, 80 20 sustainability, knowing what your base principles are for your foundation of your health. And I think that's the biggest thing actually is when we learn what our base foundations are for ourselves. It's a lot easier to know whether you are like 
truly off track, which I don't even love that term, but it's what most people relate with. Um, Yeah. So whether you're truly off track or whether you're just, you know, living in the moment. And I, I believe there's a big difference between the two. Um, because when you're living in the moment, you're still sticking to your foundational core values around your health that still matter. So maybe you're not going to the gym every day, but instead you're walking with your kids to the park and you're biking and you're playing at the park with your kids or you're swimming or you're going hiking and that sort of thing. Right. So your activity core value is still there. It just looks different than what it looks like in the winter time. Right. That's right. And that's um, that flexibility, right? In your mindset. I exactly. Like yeah, exactly. And so those are sort of the some of the principles that I teach in my membership to help people have that. that flexibility. Yeah. So that there isn't that rigidity because what I hate is when summer comes to a close and there's all this influx of women who are like, oh, I fell off track all summer. Mm, now I feel like crap. There's a shame component to it. I feel like crap. And then they go into this hardcore diet, right? And they go, Mm. they go the total other end of the spectrum. And there's this extreme component. Um, And I used to live like that. Like I, I think that's just like my type A personality. I do everything in the extremes. (laughs) So I was like that at at one time in my life where it was an extreme um, experience for me all the time. It was either really on or really off and there was nothing in between and learning to come to that center place where right. you're always sticking to those core values, but the, what, how you express them might look different at different times of your day, week, season, year, and, and yeah. even like t- times in your life. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah I love that. so yeah, it's, that's it, a beautiful it, approach. And at the same time, you can even like, I, I find that when people are like, when they have that flexibility mindset, sticking to their core values, and they can kind of know like, okay, well, some people are more lenient towards uh, sticking to that, especially when they have a strong why. Yeah. You know, like I know, for, I know for yourself, back in the day, you had no choice but to be strict, right? Yeah. And yeah. until you, you can heal certain parts of your, your body. And for myself as well, like there was at the beginning of this whole healing journey, like 10 years ago, I was, I found that I was just a lot better eating healthier, like in terms of like managing my anxiety. Right. And now, now that the body is like, as has somewhat healed, like it's, you know, it has come far, like come a long way from, from then. And of course there's a bit more flexibility. So it depends where you're at too uh and then of course or there is this 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 aspect of like okay man like it's like it's summertime i want to look good in the bathing suit so like there, so it depends on what your why is exactly so, yeah exactly and i think the important thing that some of us forget is that i think there's sometimes guilt associated with what our why could be right like like i i've worked with a lot of women who are like I know this, like they, you know, they'll come to me in like April. I know this sounds really bad, but I want to look good in the swimsuit this summer. Oh, and I'm like, there isn't anything wrong with what you're asking for. Like, there, and there's nothing wrong with you wanting to look a certain way. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with you not wanting to look a certain way either. Like I, it doesn't, I really think, and, and this is where diet culture has such this like deep, penetration into society That's where so where we have guilt if we look out of the norm or out mm. of that structure and then we have guilt if we want to look within that structure right and so That's there's right. the, there's never a winning situation and I think That's the biggest right. thing is you know when we and and so that might be your motivating factor but let's tie that down into an emotion of what that real core true value is and that core true value is you want to feel confident in your body you mm-hmm. want to feel good in your body you yeah. want to feel good in clothes that feel good on your body right like you want to compliment parts of your body that you love and maybe you want to change parts that you don't love and that's okay right yeah. and so i think yeah. when we come down into the core emotion of what your why is then it moves us away from that guilt association that yeah. we're programmed to think that we're supposed to feel right and it actually brings us down into the true desire of what we have which is really that intrinsic motivation right that intrinsic goal that we have and yeah. and for like nine out of ten people it always comes back to how they end up feeling right like there yeah. there's always going to be you know a number or a certain image associated with it but at the end of the day it really comes but you might not ever achieve that but you 
don't even care because in the process of trying to get there, you found something better, which was how you feel, the energy, yeah. you have, the sleep that you get, the confidence that you have because you're showing up for yourself and you're taking care of yourself, right? So there's all these like, um, I call them ripple effects, right? Like when you throw a rock yeah. in the lake and it just goes oh boom, gosh. boom, boom, and it gets bigger and bigger that's and true. bigger until it's so big. That's what I, I refer to it as. And it's, it's, it's a really neat process to watch happen. I know it's so great. And it's like you, you're allowing that space for that person to become the better version of themselves, whatever that looks like. And it's like, it's okay to want to look good in the bathing suit and it's okay, whatever that your goal might be. And it's, it's, a, it's a, it's all a matter of having a goal and then working towards it. And I yeah. find people like, I think that where the dangers are is when they're just set on the end goal. Mm -hmm. goal, right so then if they can kind of honor the the journey and, and the process and like I hear it all the time like progress equals happiness it's not like reach your uh, your your destination and then you'll be happy you know it's like you if you if you continue to progress and you you make these small little shifts these small little wins along the way you're going to feel you're going to boost your confidence you're going to feel better and, and and I think that's that's where it's all about and I find that once people attach certain uh, guilt or shame into their why, then that's when it kind of hurts yeah. their end game. You know, like yeah. it's like like you said, like if if their goal is like, oh my god, I just want to look really hot in a bathing suit, and like I want my husband to look at me like in this and like flirt with yeah. me, like or vice versa. You know, like just like you know, give me that that like, wow, you look great and whatever, like compliment me and and but not tie any like guilt or shame around that then you're likely to to, to meet that goal right oh for sure 100 yeah. percent. even and and the funny thing what a lot of people find is that they actually hit that goal sooner than they expected and oftentimes not even it doesn't even look like what they had anticipated it to look like right like like yeah because we're talking about you know, looking good in the bikini, usually that's associated with fat loss, right? And so they might mm. have a number in their head. Maybe it was like their pre-baby body weight, right? Or what they were in their 20s or 30s, and now they're in their 40s, right? And and it's important to remember, that, of course, that those were different seasons of our bodies, and our bodies are totally different in different yeah. seasons, right? So sometimes we may never go back to a season, but in the journey of trying to reach there, we do find that confidence. And so maybe yeah. we are like 10 or 15 pounds heavier than what we had Put that goal for but suddenly yeah our husband's like wow yeah you look really good right yeah. or you walk into the you you know you take off your clothes at the beach and you got a couple people staring right and you're yeah. like oh <laughs> yeah i feel it right so yeah so it, the sometimes the goal ends up being something a lot more attainable than what we thought and not as yeah. far far away as we had anticipated and i think also along the way you, because you know it takes a certain discipline and and like doing the work and 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 act of self love, getting there, and you'd be surprised how like how you learn to love yourself in a, in a new way. So yeah. like even if you're not looking for external value, like a validation, mm -hmm. like uh, if your goal is to like you know to look a certain way, then you're like oh my gosh, like along the way I've learned how to be uh, more disciplined, which is an act of self love in my oh, in my opinion. And, and then maybe be, be a bit more kind to myself, uh, you know, just like you kind of learn these tools and strategies yeah. to, to, to sustain that goal. Because if you're, if you're, um, if you're trying to work towards like losing a certain amount or get in shape type of thing, and then like, I don't know, once a week or twice a week, you go on a scale and you're like, you're really mad at yourself because you're not seeing what you want to see. Or if you look in the mirror and you hate what you're seeing, then you're going to, it's going to take a lot longer to lose the weight and to get in shape because the, the body, like you're operating out of like, um, out of fear instead of love. And then when yeah. you're operating out of fear and, and like, you're not like, you're basically like your nervous system is not going to allow you to lose that weight. You know what I mean? Like, so then if you're working in the space of, of loving kindness towards yourself and plus, and then like, so it's not just about dieting and, and working wow. out. It's really about incorporating all of those aspects of like self-love. And then when, even if you haven't reached that goal by a certain amount of time, if you continue to practice in this way of, you know, practicing self-love, um, some self-care rituals, whatever, then you're emanating that. 
-hmm. and people will like feel that you know what I mean so that's another part of because in the end we're all looking to be loved you know belong and connect so it's like you in that process you not only want you're not only going to get in shape and look a certain way you're you're emanating that that what you want that better version of yourself uh you know so. Absolutely. Yeah. And I remember back when I studied psychology, um, we had learned a little bit about how our self-confidence actually makes us more attractive. Like there's actually studies mm. that talk about that and that have um, uh, like uh, measured that. And and the way they measure it, of course, is like all kinds of different creative ways. But, you know, some of them is, for example, showing a stranger a photo of somebody who isn't smiling versus somebody who is smiling Mm -hmm. and then rating that person on attractiveness on a scale of, you know, one to 10. Right. And nine times out of 10, the person who was smiling was actually rated more attractive than the same person who was not smiling. Right. Which is mind blowing. When you think about what a smile can do, if you're giving off a smile, how are people perceiving you? Right. And that's just a smile. That's just like a simple change in the way that you hold your mouth, right? But when we think about how, when we start to have body appreciation through these daily practices and rituals, Mm. we actually have confidence that shows up in different areas. We have better posture. Our shoulders are back. They're lifted. We sit up straighter. That's right. Our chest is out. Our shoulder, like our head is up. That all portrays confidence as well, right? And that is well received as opposed to being like this and kind yeah. of a little bit more shy, and and like, yeah. yeah 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 totally and so all of those um non-verbal cues which let's face it is like 50 to 80 percent of communication yeah um, that's true is actually picked up by other people and then translated to traction in different yeah. forms right and so yeah. platonic or whatever right so it's it's interesting because when you do build in those rituals those daily habits of taking care of yourself you do show up differently and people perceive you differently and so you yeah the, like how your goal looks when you're getting there might look totally different when you actually achieve it so it's it's really really exciting to see it happen like, like the transformations and the progress and the the mind shifts that we go through right like coming yeah. out of that coming out of and away from sort of that diet culture mindset of that's like, right yeah it, it becomes that becomes a lifestyle and that's the way it yeah. should be because I find dieting is way too like uh oh. like it's it's too strict and it's too rigid and it's um it's it's you know it can be very depriving so it's like that's why I like like I know like for your approach with your the way you're you're um with your program like just kind of like that flexibility that's just allows people to have a healthier wow. uh, mindset yeah and then also some flexibility in the way that they show up for themselves and I'm sure you're like showing them different tools and 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 like uh, just different like self-care practices along the way to help them boost their level of confidence and even like like you said in their posture and it's everything because it's like like a lot of it is like the way like emotion is 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 the way that you like a big portion of that is if you change your physiology of your body and that's going to affect your emotions because yeah. just like you said, if you're like, if you're like, like, you know, shoulders forward and like, you're looking down, you're going to feel that emotionally. Like you're going to feel more like more depressed or like more down and as opposed to like, you know, showing up, uh, you know, proud yeah. and everything, then it's gonna, it, it does really makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. And like, because we like, you know, like we like we're connectable beings like it's like you like you know through like mirror neurons like so if you see somebody smile or yawn then we're likely to smile and yawn as well because yes. we're supposed to connect exactly so it's like that's why like if somebody sees the picture and that person's more attractive when they smile versus when they don't smile then they they're they they can feel their you know level of happiness sort of subconsciously and that makes them feel good because that's you, you just witnessing an uh somebody being happy you get a certain amount of oxytocin which makes yeah. you feel really really great yeah exactly yeah it's oh my gosh yeah. it's so amazing it's, it's mind-blowing <laughs> that's why i always say be careful who you hang out with because if you're hanging out with and i don't want to i don't like this 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 term negative nancy's because my name is nancy oh Jesus like, <laughs> like the irony there 
but it's like you're gonna become that you know that's why you have to be careful or set boundaries on like or like I don't know try to put yourself like I don't know it's hard because it's like yeah if your close friends or like your family members are tend to be more negative than positive then it's hard to like put that boundary or like put that like the imaginary bubble where you protect yourself from that Mm -hmm. energy because we're all energetic beings right so it's true and and I've heard um I've heard a like a, a phrase that says it goes something like you're the average of the five closest people you spend the most time with. So when you think about the five people in your circle, you know, like, and I hate to use this word, but like, what is the quality of that person? Or like, what quality relationship do you have with that person? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it a negative association? Do they make you feel tired and drained? Is it always drama? Like, is it, you know, when you see a text come in from them, are you like, Oh God, right. Or are you excited? Right. Like, and and so when we think about the five people that we spend the most time with in our life, those people, you're the average of those five people. So if you want to start showing up differently in your life, then you need to surround yourself with different kinds of people, right? People who are what, what we like, what we refer to as like higher up than you, right? Like they've leveled up in their That's health right. or their felt their wealth or their finances or their self-love or whatever, their commitment to themselves in some way. And so when you surround yourself with somebody, five people who are leveled up in some way to where you want to be, you are naturally going to start to gravitate into that, um, those habits and th- that mindset. And you're going to make that shift. And it does make it easier for you to actually commit on a long-term basis because it becomes ingrained in who you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no question. Like, I mean, people tend to like the people that are most likely like ourselves or the people who we strive to be. Yeah. And if we tune into that, you know, then we're allowing ourselves to hang out with people that are like us or we strive to be. But sometimes people, especially that certain, that certain individual doesn't like, doesn't like themselves all that much, Mm -hmm. you know, or if they're like have low self-esteem or like they have low self-worth then they let themselves hang out with uh, toxic people, uh, you know? Right. Yeah. So it, it takes a certain amount of, you know, strength and self-love and self-worth. That's why it always starts with you. Like it always starts with like loving yourself first. And I know that, you know, that sounds cliche and sounds cheesy, but I mean, it's so true. And it's like, it is. love yeah. yourself uh, enough. So then you're either being that change you wish to see in your, in your group or whatever, or if you're not strong enough, doing that then kind of like like just tune in it's a lot about like okay like like you said like tune into how that feels after you hang out with certain types of people uh if it feels draining if it doesn't feel all that well um then you you might have to set boundaries you don't have to cut them off but maybe less and maybe balance that energy with people who you who you love and make you feel great exactly right exactly. and it's, it's it's tough it's really easy because i i honestly had to i had to do that in my own life and it's not easy and again and those are the people like like for for a season they were like the people i aspired to like i right. like they were they were my mentors and you know i i don't want to say like it's hard because like you kind of outgrow them in a way and it's like and it's and it's fine you know and you just yeah so it's just it's it's hard like that's why they say like some certain people like you're either friends with them for like a season a reason or a lifetime and yeah and sometimes when you're doing that the work on yourself and you're increasingly you know ex- like increasing your self-worth and and your confidence and your self-esteem then you're not gonna you're you're not gonna like approach the other people the same way because you're like no I don't want to say outgrowing because I find that can be a little bit like you know like to be perceived in a, in a negative way but I'm yeah just saying, like yeah but no but in, in a way it's you're you're accurate too right like I think we as humans have always been a species that continually evolves and I think yeah. that even though we're creatures of habit you know our habits keep us safe, but they Mm -hmm. don't allow us to grow. And I Mm -hmm. think when we lean into the growth, which is scary as hell, 
right? Yeah. Like you said, like it might mean leaving some people behind. It might mean that you're cutting people off. It might mean that you're putting boundaries in place. It might mean something totally different. But um, when we lean into the growth, it allows us to evolve and become better, um, mm -hmm. you know, better versions of ourselves or grow into something that we didn't think was possible for ourselves. And so, um, yeah, it's scary. It's really so scary. True. And it's so true. And a lot of the times people don't want to change because of that reason. Absolutely. Because, yeah. You know, sometimes it's in a relationship. Yep. I was where... just thinking that like I was, there was a time where I was in a really toxic relationship for eight years. Wow. Uh, really. And I tried like, I'm, we won't go into it because it's a deep story, but yeah. like I tried to get out and I couldn't and it took years and years. But what I had to do was mentally prepare myself for that transition slowly mm. take tiny little pieces of me out of the relationship and shift it over here little bits wow day by day Incredible. year by year right yeah. so there was finally a point where there was enough of me over here to say that's wow. it it's done right wow, and like to be that. able to stick to that and that was really hard and it was really scary I mean like yeah. life or death scary. Pains galore. <laughs> yeah like it could have gone in a hundred different ways and it, could have risked my life and it could have been wow. a situation that was really really bad um mm. so I had to take it one day at a time one yeah. little piece of me at a time right and um until we're really ready to make the change we will stay in our comfort zone because even That's though right. it might be scary and safe there or unsafe there know. yeah it's what we know yeah it's what you know and I hope that you know for those listening when if ever they're like oh my gosh like I'm ready for like I don't know. I'm just ready for something better and whatever that looks like, like, and, and they know they have to either embrace the suck or they have to, you know, uh, change is scary. As you know, uh, it's always better to work with someone and to have that support because not a lot of people have, or some people don't have that, that strength or maybe that strategy that you, you did. That was a really great strategy that you did. Um, you know, pouring a little bit of yourself into the other side. And then that's like, until you were like strong enough to like, okay, I'm good enough. And that's a really great, really great strategy people can take home. But again, maybe some, some, some of them are not strong enough to do that, but it's, if they have friends, if they have somebody that they can help like that, that support, or even like a therapist or a coach or anything like that, that can really, really help them. Then that's, that's where, you know, that's, that, that can make a huge, huge difference. For sure. Yeah. Someone. For sure. Yeah. 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 No, it's good. It's those are good points. It's uh it's not easy. It, it takes a lot of work to change. <laughs> and I think, like you said, it's like it keeps us alive, you know, as we continue to evolve. Cause I find some maybe some people think like, okay, like they they've did they've did uh something for so long that they feel like that's that's their destiny that's the rest of their lives because you know that's all they know yeah. um and then but once they can kind of tap into their own greatness which you know in, evolves involves like effort and discipline and and self-love and that's but but it's easy to stay there because they don't know what the next yeah. thing is right? exactly yeah exactly that's yeah. why like surrounding yourself with five people who are different than where you are right now can be one of the best things you can do just that find right. five people that you admire that you look up to that are inspirational to you in some way and totally become a part of their world oh my gosh big time and I think you have to love yourself enough to like that you deserve that you know what I mean because I feel like that's part of the reasons why people don't um aspire to those to it's like to, to find those those people because they feel they're not worthy of that and I think I, I don't know like I was blessed and, and a lot of the times this is just coming from like the seminars that I attended to the audiobooks that I listened to um it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know them it doesn't necessarily mean that they you know like it could be like an, a really great audiobook or like YouTube video or a podcast or a seminar and those are the things that will help sh shift your mindset and like uh, decrease those limiting thoughts and the limiting beliefs and the things. But the, like, you need something different. You can't keep going and wanting something different and ex like doing the same thing and expect something different. Right. Exactly. So it's like, Definition of an insanity. That's exactly it. So, <laughs> 
Yeah. But like I said, I think it really does boil down to loving yourself enough to know that you deserve better, even if it's scarier, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's probably painful at times, you know, but that's why those strong whys are super, super important to remind you of why you're doing it. And those daily practices of, of self-love are super, super important to continue conditioning yourself, like firing, wiring, exactly. literally firing, wiring the neurons inside your brain to get yourself to love yourself just enough. And exactly. when I'm talking about like those acts of self-love, those also have to be attainable. Because if you look in your mirror and like, you don't like what you see and you're saying, I'm, I'm really, really like hot and beautiful, you, your brain is not stupid. It's going to be like, no, you're not. Or yeah. like if you look in the mirror and you're like, actually, I like this about me. And then you build upon that. Yep, That's exactly. More, and then really focus uh, your intention and attention on that and build on that. That's where it grows into something else. Exactly. So baby exactly. steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. with, with that, we should wrap it up because I have to get going. Yes. Get my Great conversation. Home. It was. I love this. <laughs> Thank you.